Hey, welcome, welcome to day 19. Today is all about tapping into your inner worth and I'm pretty fired up today. So there's going to be some tasks for you, but a lot of this is just going to be me like streaming consciousness and sharing with you the importance of realizing how worthy you are and breaking out of the place of settling and feeling stuck and just like being in the struggle and feeling disempowered because I am so tired and so fired up about people who just feel like this is the way that they're going to live. This is what's meant for them and it's like destined for them and then they stay there. And I don't want you to be one of those people. So this video today is going to be all about that. If you are hopping on live, drop some hearts, say hi. Uh, if you're catching the replay, comment replay. Let me know that you're here and uh, let's get started. So today I was doing uh, some of my meditation practices, my quantum healing work in the morning, and it got me super activated, super charged up. <laughs> like, it's like I had coffee, but I didn't. <laughs> I just meditated a lot. And it got me so fired up to the level of, you know, the programming that has been placed upon us on planet Earth. And especially, especially in women, I mean, it's, it's there for everyone. There's a lot of different programming, pressure, stress, and this really limited paradigm that we've been taught is reality. Um, and it's keeping people stuck. It's keeping people in a very victim place, keeping people in trauma and pain and in feeling unworthy or not enough. So if you struggle with those things, firstly, you're not alone. Secondly, there's a reason you feel that way. And the reason you feel that way is because you've been taught to feel that way. You've been taught to see yourself in a very disempowered light. And that is what I want to change because it is all a programming. It's all a mindset. It's a shift in our beliefs about ourselves and a shift in our energy and the way we show up in the world. And so, you know, like, especially for women, there's so much unworthiness, getting some hearts, yay. <laughs> I always love those. Um, there's, there's so much unworthiness and feeling like it's bad to want more or feeling like we don't deserve, um, you know, good things. We don't deserve more money. We don't deserve a good relationship. We don't deserve to have, you know, the lifestyle or the happiness or just like the satisfaction in our lives. And this is something that I want everyone to break free from because it's not what we were actually put on this planet to do, okay? It's part of a system that was created to keep us playing small and keep us feeling small. So what I'm bringing as an invitation in this video, um, and I guess that can lead into like task one in terms of a little bit of homework for today is, you know, inviting you to see what kind of beliefs you currently hold about yourself, about your worth, and about what's possible for you and like write that down so write down your current beliefs around yourself your worth and what's possible for you because chances are there's going to be a lot of limiting beliefs in there which are just those limitations right of like oh, i can't do that or i'm not ready yet or i'm not good enough or i'm not deserving and worthy there's going to be a lot of those in there there's a lot of conditions We've been programmed to think that only when I do these things, then I can receive or then I will be good enough or only when, you know, I hustle and work and break my back, then I deserve to take a break <laughs> and then I deserve to relax. No, that's not true. And that's not right. That's just what we've been taught. And if we look at generations, generations, generations before us, like the programming, the cycle that they've been living in is a cycle of hustle, of force, of overwork, of desperation, of lack, of never enough and not actually living. I don't know about you, but like I look at generations that came before and I'm like, did you actually like enjoy your life? Did you actually get to do things that made you happy? Or did you just feel like you woke up went to work, punched the clock, sat there, or like, you know, even before that, did you go 
put in the hours and like hustle and grind and, and like work super hard with manual labor and stuff like that, like different kinds of work, but it was still work nonetheless. And it was from a very soulless place, like working and pouring ourselves out into other people and never feeling, <laughs> I just realized the cat is here and he's like, it's so creepy because he's just sitting right here, like staring at me. Um, but he was so silent. It was like he snuck up. <laughs> um, so, come on. Let's bring him up, actually. Whoa. Let's bring you up here. Okay, so these generations before us and <clears throat> the, the level of consciousness, it was a lower level of consciousness. And I don't mean that in an insulting way. I mean that of like, we realize more now and we're learning more now and we're constantly becoming more and more connected to ourselves. We're constantly becoming more and more connected to, you know, believing that life is more than just like a hustle or a struggle or a stress. So, um, yeah, task one is really uncovering, looking at what you believe is possible, what you believe you deserve. Um, and then task two is going to be to look at, you know, why do I feel, here's a question that you might not realize, but most of you will probably uh, connect with is like, why do I feel like I don't deserve something better? And journal on that and see what comes through. Because there is a reason that right now, you don't believe that you deserve something better in any area of your life, right? And that's part of what I shared on yesterday's video is in order to manifest and connect to what we want, we have to embody it. We have to uh, become it already, but you can't become it if you don't believe it's possible or you don't believe you deserve it. So this is kind of, it all goes hand in hand in terms of releasing some of the limitations, some of the beliefs of like, why do I feel like I don't deserve these things? because that is all just an illusion. It's something we've given our power to, you know, a parent or a friend has made a comment um, or they've said some kind of conditional thing of like, oh, you don't deserve that. Or even like, this is such a simple example, <laughs> but even like having our joy, like as a kid, you know, oh, I really want this toy or I really want, you know, dessert or I really want this thing that's gonna bring me pleasure. And then you get met with, oh no, only once you do this thing you don't like first, like only when you get do your homework. So we're being programmed that like the struggle comes before the pleasure. Like the only way we can have the thing we want is to struggle and do the thing we don't want first. And this isn't to say that like it's bad, it's bad and like, yes, do your homework, <laughs> I get that. And the intention wasn't to like program us or make us feel a certain way. But nevertheless, it's still uh, an imprinting in our subconscious and the way we believe about ourselves and what we're here to do. So it's still a part that makes us feel like, oh, you know, like I need to struggle more and hustle in order to earn more money or in order to, you know, do this, 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 right? So really uncovering the limitations and where these things came from. And what I invite you to realize is that like at any single moment in any given day, you have the power to choose something different. I talk about this all the time inside my release to thrive mastermind. I talk about this all the time. Um, even on my course in miracles videos on YouTube is like, you have the power to choose a different thought and you have the power to not believe everything that you're thinking. So the reason I am where I am today is because it's not because I don't have the negative thoughts or the limiting thoughts or that I don't still have old pulls from like the programming and the stuff I grew up with. Like, it's not that I didn't have that. It's that I learned to have like hyper awareness of every single thought that was going through my head and constantly catching it and going, ooh, like, is that a thought that I wanna give my power to? Is that a thought I wanna continue to believe? Is that a thought that makes me feel expansive and limitless and like full of potential and opportunity? Or is that a thought that makes me feel constricted and small and limited and gross and like 
insecure or negative, right? Because I have the power, as do you, to focus on which thoughts we're giving, giving our attention to, which thoughts we're going to believe. So like, this is where it comes to taking your power back ultimately is like, no matter what the system taught us and no matter what kind of programming you have from your upbringing or from society or from culture, from family, no matter what kind of pressures you felt, no matter what kind of traumas you've had and pain that you've been through, you still ultimately in this moment have so much power in just being like, I'm not going to I'm not going to give into that anymore. Like, no, I'm choosing something different or like, no, I'm going to walk my own path and uh I'm not going to give any energy to that thought because it doesn't serve me and I'm not attaching to it anymore. Like this was so big for me after losing my brother and after a lot of my traumas and pain was like I identified with it so strongly for quite some time. And it wasn't until I started doing more of this work that I realized, oh, I actually don't have to give all of my power to that anymore. Because focusing on that just makes me feel small and makes me feel like I don't have power in my life and I don't have any ability to control or make something better. It makes me feel really stuck. And that's not where I want to stay. So I'm going to focus on something different. And so even though I had like the traumas or the pain, I still went, okay, I see you. And like, I'll work on releasing you. I'll feel you. <laughs> I'll let the emotions out. I'll do whatever I need in this moment. And I'm not going to let you consume me for the day and make me feel like this is who I am. This is my identity. This is all that I am in the world, right? So you have the power Yes, so true. <laughs> Yay, I'm glad you're resonating. Um, and that's the thing, like every single one of us, I know I've talked with so many of you inside this group and inside this community, and you have gone through some heavy things and you've experienced pain and heartbreak and loss and um, a lot of suffering. I'm not taking away from that. I want you to feel so fucking empowered to know that no matter what happens, you still have the ability to rise above it and you still have the ability to like you determine who you are and you determine what you're here to do in the world and like you determine what your limitations are and what they aren't so that comes down to you you get to claim it to own who you are to take up space <laughs> to feel confident and aligned and just like go for it and do it or you could continue to believe the limiting thoughts or you could continue to just see yourself in the pain or you could continue to like give all your power to the programming and the stuff from society and the media and things that make you feel small but those are two different options and they create two different vibrations and two different outcomes for your life so if you're here and you're like a change maker and you really want to create something better you want to find freedom then it does, it starts with you and it starts with taking that power back and not giving all of your power to just the things that you've been told or the things you believe are true. So start questioning those and start focusing on what actually actually does lift you up, what does make you feel good. So I'm gonna end this video here for today. Um, those two tasks are there to help you create some of that awareness and really uncover where are you potentially being limited? Where are you still giving power away to like a lower level program that doesn't actually serve you at all? And then let's just throw it in there because uh, I feel like it. <laughs> Task three will be to like craft a new uh, like an affirmation or a mission statement of like um, this could be something that's like, I am no longer available for X, Y, Z. This was a huge thing when I was going through um, money struggles, for example. I was like, I am no longer available for debt and fear around money. And that's like, boom, that's claiming my authority and helping me step and shift into a place of feeling powerful instead of powerless to my situation. 
I did that same thing when it came to relationships. Like I am no longer available for men who do not see my worth and who do not respect me. And I like, it was crazy. Like I literally did this um, right when this guy had like slid into the DMs, like a past person. And I was like, what are you here for? You know, <laughs> like really? And it was like my old self at the time would have been like, oh, but like there's a tension and maybe this could go somewhere and like maybe give him more energy to it. And I was like, no, I'm not available for anything like this. Like I know what I want. I know what I deserve and I'm not available. I'm not going to settle for anything less. And I started to program that into my belief system and this dude just fell away. Like <laughs> energetically, I was not vibrating. I wasn't a match anymore. So it couldn't work. It was just like, it's like up here. And then they're just kind of like, boom, and bounce back off. There's nothing to settle into. That's the same when it comes to fear around money or fear around anything in your life. It's like, if you're available for the fear, then it can set in and it can consume you. Believe me, I've been consumed by it before, so I get it. But if you're not a match and you're saying like, I'm not available for that anymore. I know I always have more than enough. I know I deserve more than enough. I know I deserve to have all the things that I want simply because I want them. I don't need to give in to the beliefs and the old programming of like, I need a reason, I need a condition, I need to justify why I'm enough. No, throw that stuff out the window. Like I am enough because like I simply am and I'm no longer available for anything less. And as you claim that, as you elevate your energy and you shift into that place, then once again, you know, fear around money tries to creep in, it's like, boom, there's no place for it to attach to you anymore because you're like, no, <laughs> I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that paradigm. And we create our own reality. So what we're focusing on is what continues to be created. So if you focus on fear, a lot of times then we create more examples, more experiences, more proof of that fear in our life. But if you focus on like the abundance there goes the cat. <laughs> if you focus on the abundance, if you focus on leveling up and really embodying, oh, <clears throat> really connecting into who it is you want to be, how you want to show up in the world, this camera, <laughs> the cat is doing the little thing, you know, when they're pawing the blanket. So if this camera is shaking a little bit. That's why. <laughs> um, but you get to create that. So as a conscious creator of your reality, you get to claim how the how the world works. You get to claim the rules. You get to claim what you're available for. You get to claim how money works, how love works, how health works, you know? I used to believe that, oh gosh. <laughs> I used to believe that the foods that I ate um, impacted my weight. I used to believe that like, you know, all of the diet culture, all of the stuff in the media used to really consume me. I thought it like I gave so much power to it. Um, I started getting more health conscious like six years ago, maybe. And yes, I took practical steps in terms of like, I do have a very clean, clean diet now in terms of what I eat and consume. But I also just believe that like, whether or not I exercise, I don't put on any weight like at all. And I used to put on weight. I put on a lot of weight my first year at university, even though I was playing university volleyball. So it's possible. It's not like my metabolism. It's like I could gain weight, but I don't believe in it. I, I am not available for that. <laughs> and like, it's going to sound crazy to some people. I totally get that. Um, but I'm not available for that. I don't believe that I have to like exercise and exert myself every day and hustle in order to have a body that I like or a body that I love or that feels good. I just believe I get to feel good and I get to be healthy no matter what I do. And that's my level of consciousness. That's what I'm available for. And because of that, um, like even if I don't do any kind of exercise to the point where it's bad, um, I still look the same. 
no matter what I'm eating or anything. And again, it's not the metabolism because my metabolism used to, I used to put on weight from those things. And now it's just like, I don't. So that's like a strange example. But my point is, is you get to claim what you're available for in money, in relationships, in health, in lifestyle, um, in your own, you know, relationships, family, friends, all these things. You get to determine what you're willing to settle for or what you believe you deserve. And if you set that energetic minimum of like, this is what I'm available for and nothing less, and you stay consistent, you're going to be met with those things or those experiences that can try to pull you down. You stay consistent and you just remember, hey, wait a minute, it's all good because I believe this, I know I'm supported, I know I deserve this, then you will see that you attract more things that actually match that belief and that reality, okay? So that went into a huge tangent. But that was to summarize that task three for you today is to create some kind of mantra, some kind of thing. This again continues from yesterday, the embodiment of who is it you want to be. <clears throat> so make that claim, make that standard, that little sentence of like, this is who I am, or I know I am worthy and deserving of X, Y, Z simply because I want it or simply because that's who I am. There's no need to explain, no need to create conditions or rules. You create your own rules. So take your power back as the creator and make those rules work for you, okay? <laughs> so that's your tasks for today. Um, let me know down below if you are going to give this a try. Let me know what you resonate with and um, this is going to be a huge, huge thing. I mean, this is the foundation work is what I teach inside Release to Thrive in like helping you take your power back and see your beliefs, see the conditioning and start to shift and feel empowered in who you are. And what I'm creating now and I'm excited about launching soon is the second chapter, which is my Limitless Mastermind. I have been sitting on this for like over a year, so excited to launch it. And the, the things that I've learned over the last year with my different coaches have helped me radically shift and quantum leap into where I am now. And this is what I'm gonna be teaching in Limitless, like the deep consciousness reprogramming, the deep energetic work to align with that. So if this is something you're interested in, then shoot me a message or just keep your eyes peeled because I will be launching that very soon. And the, the first round is going to have some extra special bonuses and stuff. So I can't wait to do that and share that more with you. Give these tasks a try. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you tomorrow for day 20. I can't believe we're already on day 20. So have a beautiful day and we'll talk soon.